Hi, I'm Eric Beard. I had a question the other day from a, a, another personal trainer who gave a little bit of a case study for someone who had a disc injury. And one of my comments or tips was to teach their client how to disassociate from their spine, their pelvis, and their hips. And the same thing that you want to see in the upper extremity too is you want to be able to disassociate movement of the spine from movement to glenohumeral joint and scapula. So basically disassociating the spine from the hips and the shoulders. And what that means is people tend to lump movements in the upper or lower extremity together where they can't stay stable at the spine, their pelvis comes out of alignment instead of just moving at the hip or the shoulder joint. What this might look like is typically during a squat when someone goes down, instead of sitting back at the hip, cracking at the hip, spine stays neutral, flexing at the hip, they might do this. They can't disassociate their spine from their pelvis. From a pressing motion or a pulling motion, their spine might start out neutral and they'd move this way or during a row, you'd see that. So you want to be able to separate movement from the spine with the hips and movement from the spine with the shoulders. This can go a long way in disc health as well as efficiency of workouts. If you can do this, it will help prevent synergistic dominance or if you look at it the other way around, by working on your flexibility and core stability and activation or going through NASM's four-step corrective exercise process, inhibit overactive muscles, lengthen short muscles, activate inhibited muscles, and then integrate them all back in together. This can help prepare someone to minimize that and you can truly teach them how to move. Many time first, many first time clients or novice exercisers, actually even advanced exercises unfortunately, just no gross movements. They can't separate their spine from anything else. And after a while that wears down the discs and ligaments and leads to injury which is no good. So hopefully that tip was helpful. Short two cents on disassociating the spine from the pelvis and the hip and also disassociating the spine from the glenohumeral joint.